Hey everyone, this is a special edition today of Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out. If you've been following me for a while, you know I did the podcast for a decade and ended it to go on to new adventures. But when I heard about Devra's book, I'm like, we have to do an interview. We've got to get this up on YouTube because the people watching my videos would really benefit from your book. I've known Devra, gosh, I think over a decade. She's really lovely. When I did an international internet TV show, Reawaken Your Brilliance, which I eventually took as my business name, Devra sent me all these great authors and on body, mind, spirit, personal growth. And I got to read wonderful books. It supported me in my journey and meet some really incredible people. I am thrilled that Devra is on the other side now and has written the book. So that is kind of exciting for her. And this is such an important topic as someone who moved twice in two years and said, I'd never do it again. Let me tell you about today's guest. With over 25 moves under her belt, Deborah Jacobs is practically a professional. She and her family have moved across the U.S. and even once to Korea. Though she didn't serve in the military, several of her moves were because she was married to an army man. Along the way, Deborah learned numerous valuable lessons on everything from how to pack properly, to do-it-yourself moves, to how to hire the right movers for cross-country moving. On these pages, she shares the good, the bad, and the happy experiences that can help others experience a happy move. The owner of Dancing Word Group, Deborah is a successful literary agent. Welcome, Deborah. Hi. So tell me, why did you write a book about moving? Because I've moved 29 times in 40 years. And my daughter and I have run into so many things that just could have been avoided. And from every move, there was something else I learned. And so I was actually speaking with one of the publishers that I work with. And they said, you need to write a book. And I said, are you going to publish the book? And they said, absolutely. So <laughs> I talked to my best friend, uh, Brett Elders, who is a professional writer, and said, I'll supply all the information if you write the book. So that's what we did. We wrote it together. That's amazing. Now, did it get each, was it easier each time that you moved? Because I have to tell you, we had downsized. Thank you. We had downsized. And I was like, I'm never moving again. And then my mom got sick and we ended up moving back to my hometown. I have to tell you, I was ready to shoot someone. It, you know, that was the reason, the main reason behind the book, because in every single move, there was something else that happened or something else that came up. And when I was going back through my memories of the last 40 years and all the moves, I, it was like, you know, if people had this information, ahead of time and a book that you could write all this stuff in so all you had to do is have this one book when you actually got settled on the other end then you could avoid probably 99 percent of all of the problems that either i've had or other people have encountered now one of the things that i did is i actually got a hold of you haul and pack rat mm. and said you know, tell me other things that maybe I don't have in this book. And so they added their two cents to it from things that they experience or have had people who have rented vehicles experience. So talk, talk a little bit about, um, because from my perspective of someone that declutters and helps people get organized, we sometimes the last part or that we think about last is prior to moving, which should actually, in my view, that's going to save you the time and money. And that's really where you want to do the work. So talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. And you probably love the beginning of this book, the, the what to do before the move. Um, I think one of the things that I found on several of my moves, you would have thought I would have learned it, you know, right from the start was you, you sell, donate, or, or get rid of anything that you don't really want. 
on one of my moves, I moved so much furniture that I ended up selling at the other end after spending a fortune <laughs> with the, the weight of moving that. And so I tell people, you know, if you're first starting to think about moving, start purging. You know, get rid of all of that outdated food or makeup that isn't any good anymore. And do you, would it really be cheaper to buy new pots and pans on the other end than take your old ones? Um, I've even, in one of my moves, uh, I got rid of all my mattresses mm. after realizing how expensive it was. And they were like 10 years old. And it was going to cost me like $500 to move them when I could turn around and have brand new, which we desperately needed anyway, on the other end. So yeah, the, that pre, the pre-thinking is probably most of what irritates and freaks out people is when they start packing and they usually start packing too late, <laughs> you know? excuse me and we go into that in the book too so touch yeah. a little bit on and i know you do that something else that i think is really important how do i know that i have a legit company because you know you hear these things i moved and then my stuff disappeared we packed and i never saw it again well and it can be even worse than that now because so many people go and they enter their information on these websites that they think they're getting a main moving line. And then they start getting a hundred emails and phone calls from companies that say they are related, but they're not. And a good example that's in the book of one of my, my Ubus with that, uh, I had always moved with main brand movers mm -hmm. uh, or myself. And I was in San Diego and this company convinced me they were part of one of the main van lines and so I hired them thinking I was going to save money because it was priced by foot I knew how many feet I had mm. well when they went to load the truck of course they loaded it in a way it went over that and they told me it's a thousand dollars more than your estimate and they were going to hold my stuff captive if I didn't pay them the thousand dollars. That's almost a regular thing going on in the moving industry now. So that that was one of the things I did include in the book um, and making sure they're insured. Uh, yeah. There was a, a moving van that caught on fire in uh, Phoenix recently uh, because the movers weren't top scale movers and they had moved a barbecue grill which you're not Ooh. allowed to move and it caught on fire and they didn't have the insurance to cover so the people lost every single thing in the house i can't even imagine that do you have a preference you think people should pack themselves or should they hire someone if you're going with a legitimate company i would say and you don't feel physically like you can pack yourself, yes, you can hire them to pack you. But you've got to make sure you're standing there on top of it the entire time. One of the moves my parents made, um, they wouldn't let me pack that, which by now I can pack the entire <laughs> house in like 48 hours. Um, and when we got to the other end, this company had packed pots for plants with dirt in them and no plants uh, you know things to add weight uh, there were also a couple things missing you know so I always pack myself I I have done that since my first move and I will tell you I've only had one thing break and it was one little cup out of all of the moves that I've made because I know how to pack and that's why I put some of the tips on my YouTube channel of how to pack. That's great. Hey, that's impressive. One, I've broken more than that in my work. So, and I wasn't moving. So that's a pretty, pretty impressive record there. Uh, what would you say are, uh, well, I guess what I'd ask is what is the most important tip that you would have for anyone moving? Have everything organized. One of the aspects of this book 
um, is it allows you to organize. You mm -hmm. want from just from thinking about where you're going, you know, pre-checking the area, being careful if you're going to rent what you're renting, um, to who's going to move you, are you going to move yourself, are you going to do a pod and store things, to what information you're going to need on the other end. Uh, some of the forms in the book are like who your utility companies are, what your mm -hmm. sign-off dates are, who the new utility companies are, if you have a letter of credit that you can use. And you put all of this information in one book. So when you get to the other end, you don't have to go, oh, okay, what was that utility company that I paid? Or did, did they really have the right turnoff date? Uh, knowing things when you're organized, like movers are not always on a perfect schedule. So if they say they're going to pick you up on Friday the 1st, you don't want to turn your power off Friday the 1st. Right. You, because they could call you and say, oh, we can't get there till tomorrow morning. And then you're stuck in an empty house with no power. That's a great tip. My mom was a realtor. So she was like, yeah, she was like, make sure you don't do that. Now, uh, I love this from because I'm an organizer and it makes me happy because I would have would have used this book because we moved twice in two years and I thought I was going to shoot myself in the head. But I want to yeah. talk about um, because I'm uptight. And we got a little bit behind the eight ball, but I'm glad that you brought it up. So we had uh, decided to store uh, things because we were moving back, staying with my parents until we found a house. So we're like, we can't unpack. So the pod people, we now I'm organized. I had the contract. I had done all that. I had, you know, negotiated. They said, we're going to charge higher gas prices. I said, absolutely not. Cause I don't know what it's so anyway, very proud of myself. So it gets the day that they're supposed to come and drop off the pods. No one's here. Had to make several calls. So I allowed a week to pack, right? It's we're packing two. There weren't huge pods, two pods a week. They came two days before we are set to leave. Because it was because, well, you know, we're moving a lot of people to North Carolina. So we don't have the pods completely out of my control. Now it ended up happening. I'm always, I want to, cause I, what, what I want you to address is your thoughts on having a plan B. Now at this point, uh, you know, we had to get, I was trying to find people to help and it was my husband and his friends and, and me, because I couldn't find people mm -hmm. last minute or, you know, the problem is people say it in the flake. And so it was a really stressful time. Cause I'm like, you know, one, you're going to knock some money off the price. And I said, but you know, when are you getting here? So my week, now you said you can pack in 48 hours and I had, had essentially done that. But so my week timeline gets shrunk to two, two days. So talk a little bit about that or having a plan B and what your thoughts are on that. One of the really important things, whether you're using pod movers or you're using regular movers is read the fine print and the contracts. All of them, I, I and I swear it's probably all of them, will in fine print say they can come three days prior or up to three days after the estimated. Ooh. But they don't point that out. They say, we're going to be there at 8 a.m. on the 1st. And then you're waiting at 8 a.m. on the 1st and the truck didn't come in mm -hmm. or the driver got postponed delivering somewhere else and you're sitting there. This is why in the book, it, there's two things I do when it comes to pre-moves. For pod moves, or you haul and you're going to move your own. Tape off an area in your house, pre pack everything that's going into that pod. Always have what I consider your first right box, where it has your paper plates and all those things that you're going to need that you don't before you unpack. The, the nice thing is if you're already packed and they're going to be two days later, you have your emergency box that has everything in it that you could need to sustain yourself without having to unpack anything. And if it's going into a pod or, or a rental truck and you have the area taped off, you already know exactly what's going to fit, exactly how you're going to pack it because you're going to put everything within that taped off area. Now, if they come too much earlier, 
um, you can talk to whoever the rep is that you signed up with and allow for so many days after they're supposed to pick up for you to go ahead and play catch up. So it just sits a few extra days. That's also in the fine print. Most of the really good companies like Packrat will say, you know, they'll leave it for up to six days before they pick up. And you just tell them, no, I'm not ready. You know, I need two more days. And, and so it keeps you on a schedule where you're not like, oh my God, they're here early. <laughs> yeah. I'm, and you know what? I missed that on the fr fine print. And I'm, you know, I think because everything I had going on, I was really overwhelming. And, you know, I think what's really valuable about this book is, you know, moving's up there for life stressful events, right? And having a, a guide to be like, okay, this is what I need to do. Especially I know when people get overwhelmed, like I can't think, what is it that I have to do? And okay, oh, bam, right here. All right, let me read. Let me look at my little checklist. Well, and you know, with organizing reduces stress. Yeah. If you have everything in one place and you're really organized, it'll help you because a lot of the stress comes prior to the move. But people don't realize how much stress comes after the move. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not marking your boxes properly, how are you going to find your kids, you know, bath towel, <laughs> you, you know, when you get to the place? Uh, there. So we really stress in the book exactly how to pack, what to pack with what. Because that's the other thing. You don't want to get to a place and go, oh, this is great. I have all the bath towel, but where did I put the soap? <laughs> or if you do like I did, I have this tendency, especially when I moved to the South, which I've done many times, I arrived the day of a hurricane. So you can't go to a store and buy soap or mm -hmm. dish soap or paper plates or something. You need to know you have everything right there with you. Um, and then the after the move, uh, you know, as I call it, one of the things I insisted in going in this book is all of your medical records, all your mm, dental yeah. records, because you get there and like, I moved one time and I, I couldn't get my daughter into school because I had packed her school records. Uh. So you know, we go into all of that in the book so you can basically have a stress-free move. So I have to ask you, are you done or are you going to move again? <laughs> you know, that's like the question. Um, I promised my granddaughter when we made this last move two years ago that back to Arizona that we would stay in the same place until she graduated college. She is now a freshman in college. So I will be here at least another three years. Um, I don't know that I'll leave Arizona again, but you never say never. Every time I've said, I'm never going anywhere again. I love it here. Within a year, I'm moving cross country. <laughs> <laughs> well, Deborah, tell everyone where they can find the book and I will put uh, a note so that people will be able to link to that. Um. If you go to a happy move, a happy move .com, they're like all of these different online buyers are listed there, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, it's, uh, it's, it's available for pre-order right now everywhere. Uh, I guess by the time this airs, it'll be available everywhere, but also don't forget your local bookstores, your local bookstores. Mm -hmm. If they don't have it in stock, ask them to get it. Um, I like supporting local businesses. Me too. That's great. So do you have any final words of wisdom for the brave people that will be moving? Get the book. Be <laughs> organized. Fill out the forms in the book. <laughs> and don't assume, because you may have moved once or twice in your life, that you know these things. I didn't. And when you read the book and read some of the stories of the hell that my daughter and I have gone through, you'll understand, oh, I didn't know that could happen. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on and sharing uh, all about your book. Thank you so much for having me. 
I'll include a link below where you can purchase a book. And I just want to mention it is not out yet, but Deborah showed me. I'm really excited. It's spiral bound. So that way you can lay it flat. You know, if you get a little bit of dirt on it, it's going to be okay. But you can, she has all the, you know, I'm an organized person, a list person. So you can easily write in all that information. You're going to find it in the book. And she also touches on military and international moves. So if you're looking for, uh, again, an easy stress remove, check it out. Don't forget, I have over 500 episodes of Clear Clutter Inside and Out. And if you're looking for 10 free tips to declutter your life right now, head on over to reawakenyourbrilliance.com and check out more free resources and how I can support you in decluttering your life to create a life and space you choose, deserve, and desire.